Good morning, good afternoon, good evening all around the world. We are Matt and Julie Beamer with Club 1040 coming at you live. It's our monthly live Q&A. So we're excited to be with you today. Yep, every first Wednesday of the month. And this first Wednesday happens to be the actual first day of the month. So, um, you know, this is your time for uh, hearing updates and then also for asking questions. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and, uh, you know, we'll attempt to do our best to address those questions if we can. So, um, uh, Yesterday, we, you sent out the, the email, didn't yes. you? Yes. Uh, good morning, Babu. Good morning, John. It's nice to have you on here this morning. Um, we sent out an e-news yesterday. If uh, you'd like to find out more about what Club 1040 is doing in uh, the regions of the world, that the, the North Africa, Middle East region, um, please subscribe to our email. You can also see a lot of things happening on our YouTube page our Instagram, and our Facebook, and that's all Club 1040, no space between CLUB 1040. It was November 1st, we started uh, and helped with, along with AIM's mission, something called REACH, Radical Advancement, Radical Evangelistic Advancement for Church Planters and Harvesters in Northern Nigeria. It was amazing. Yeah, so... We had, uh, you know, the established the Bible college there. At that time, there were four campuses and about 1,200 students. And the aim had always been from the very beginning is to reach up into the primarily Islamic North Africa, Middle East, excuse me, pre predominantly Northern Nigeria, Muslim Northern Nigeria, and especially the Hausa speaking language people. Um, and so... God led us, though, first to establish the Bible College in Abuja, Nigeria, and then from there, a couple other campuses, Port Harcourt, and then eventually Kaduna in the north, and that's when eventually the Hausa campus was started. So, But before we transitioned from there to where we are now in Lebanon, um, the Lord helped us to uh, kind of put in our heart how to mobilize the local leaders and the graduates of the Bible school, etc., towards the unreached people groups in the north. And that happened by basically asking the team, and we had a great team there, said, you know, identify the top 20 least reached or most influential unreached people groups in the northern part of Nigeria. And uh, then they came up with this acronym, R-E-A-C-H. What is it again? Radical Evangelistic Advancement for Church Planters and Harvesters. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I remembered. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, that's really good. And so um, six years ago, and the amount of progress that's happened is, is, is substantial. So um, make sure you check out our email. If you, if you haven't got the email, check out some of the social media posts as well. Julie's posted some things, some updates there. So Club 1040, just a way of reminder, we're a relational missionary movement reaching the unreached. Everything we do is towards that purpose. Purpose and and we, through relationship. Yeah. That's why we do these uh, monthly Facebook lives is we want you to know you who are in relationship with us, our friends, family, partners. Uh, we want you to know what you're a part of. What you're investing in all across the world. It's wonderful. Good morning, Don. It's good to see you on here. Don Adams, part of our Lebanese team. Um, we do it three ways. Uh, you know, we help to train leaders. And I love train indigenous church planters and leaders that will start 100 churches. And we have a goal that this is uh, that we'll do that throughout all 22 Middle East, North African nations by 2030. Then we mobilize missionaries. We have a goal that we're going to do a hunt. We're going to help send out a hundred near culture missionaries to the MENA region by 2030. And then hopefully today we inspire you. That's one of our goals is to inspire the church that we can uh, reach this generation, every nation all across. To, I, I love this generation in every nation. So October 4th, um, uh, Elizabeth Beamer, she designated this day to be Club 1040 Day, um, and it's October 4th, 1040, or 1004, but it's Club 1040 Day, and on this day, 30 years ago, we took off to yeah. England. Um, 1994, yeah. 1994, in the month of October, on, it happened to be the 4th of October, <laughs> we moved overseas and so this is uh we've just finished 29 years and we've started our 30th year 
And so one of the things that we do every year during Club 1040 Day is we, um, you know, talk about what you've accomplished, but then also we share opportunities as well to and look forward to what we're going to do in the future. And this last time, uh, this the whole day, like almost every 30 minutes or 45 minutes or so, we did an interview. We did 13 of them from early in the morning to late at night across the time zones. And so if you missed that and you're interested in hearing firsthand all the amazing things that you're accomplishing through Clifton 1040, then make sure you check out the YouTube page and look for those interviews, those 13 interviews that happen on Club 1040 Day. But also, we announced, you know, that was October 4th, and the, the Bible College was starting on October, yeah, on October 6th and 7th. And October 7th is a day that everybody will remember forever. forever. And, you know, I remember Julie, she was telling me, because we were in the place where we meet. Um, there's the Bible school. There's yeah. no internet, no Wi-Fi. <laughs> Which is great for the training. Nobody yeah. can get any disruptions on their phones. But then you come on, kind of, you surface out of there at the amphitheater space, and all of a sudden the phone starts going off. And she's like, oh, you know, there's a bunch of things going on at the border. And I'm like, oh, that always happens. That's not a big deal. <laughs> and, Little did we know. Yeah. Everything yeah. that had kicked off in 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 the, the country same below us. weekend yeah. that that the Bible College was launched in Beirut, that happened, and so, um, but on that day, Club Ten Forty Day, we also had about six scholarships come in for the Bible College. That was our main focus, and is continues to be our main focus as our project for, throughout the rest of the year, and so. But now we want to celebrate the fact that even in these few short weeks, these couple weeks. We now have over 20 scholarships out of our target of 100 scholarships. So we're 20% on the road towards our goal of 100. So thank you so much for the generosity. It's amazing, you guys. I just wish you could see the students' faces, guys. But I, I just want to just talk to you about the students that are coming to, you know, the, col the Bible College in Lebanon literally sitting in their seats so excited in fact on the club 1040 social media we have one of the gentlemen he's so precious and he was talking about he had always heard about raymond he had always heard about this bible college and to think that he was now sitting in a seat <laughs> and being able to hear and be trained for the gospel and he just says you know i've always wanted to have this training and now it's come to me and that's all because of you the partners of club 1040 and the team members like Christy and Kayla and others that are on here, you know, it's because of you that this actually is possible. And they are so excited to continue, even in the midst of all the craziness that's happening around them. They're still sitting in their seats. They were still, this this uh, last weekend, we had um, team members that flew in from Nigeria, from our Bible school in Nigeria, from the Bible school in Egypt, and from the Bible school in Norway. All of these uh, three amazing Bible schools flew in to celebrate and to join our team on the ground in Lebanon. Yeah, so digging into that a little bit more, you know, obviously we, we finished the orientation on the very day that the, um, the war started. And so, you know, through the next two weeks before the next Bible college session, because they take place about twice a, twice a month, um, there were a lot of questions as to, you know, what's, I mean, there was a, there was one point where the U.S. Embassy was, um, you know, had a lot of uh, disturbances and that sort of thing. You would have saw that in the media. Um, a lot of friends and family were, you know, asking about us. Is everybody okay? Asking about our different team members. Is everybody okay? And so there was one particular, um, you know, we just continued. Everything is operational as, as it has been, and we continue to be focused you know, like um, the Apostle Paul said, he said, you know, I've chosen to stay here in Ephesus because of the fact that there's an effectual door of opportunity. Mm -hmm. he, he wasn't moved, even though there were a lot of challenges there. And he talks about those challenges. He wasn't moved by those challenges. He's like, this is a door of opportunity. I'm going to seize it. And so one of the ways that we did that, it was so cool because it was, it was all those people that were planning to come from Egypt, they're Egyptians, but there were families and said, you know, should you go? But they still came and it radically changed. There was the first time ever seen a Bible college outside of Egypt, um, you know, experience and saw the team and we spent time with them. They really got to see behind the scenes and learn so much. And they're like, now we know what we're supposed to do. We're going to go back and help make that happen in Egypt. 
And then uh, um, Brad, who came from uh, Norway, he, um, I asked him, you know, come and spend time with the team and share kind of, you know, uh, presentation to what you're doing and why you're doing it and all of that. And it was incredible, the presentation, and it made such an impact on the team. And there was then opportunities for him to ask questions and the team that was at best practice sharing. And then Taiwo, as Julie said, came, who came from Nigeria, who's working behind the scenes with the, from the internet standpoint and really helping us from that standpoint. So even though all that trouble's going on, we still had people flying in from around the world and making that session happen. And one of the cool things is one of the pastors who attends the Bible college said, you know what, I was kind of watching to see because there were different ones that started to leave the country. We heard all the tensions and things going on and and they're like, I was watching to see what would if happen with the team. The Bible school, and yeah. if would the sessions continue to go forward or not? And they're like, yeah, we came forward. And at the end of it, the testimonies were like the faith of all the students had risen to a higher level by the end of it, that That's weekend. Right. And since then, that was almost two weekends ago. And uh, our next Bible college session is getting this ready is to start. And guess what? Um, Tokes uh, Takumbo Adejuan is flying in from Raymond, Nigeria. He's the Raymond director there. And he's going to be flying in to our students at Raymond, Lebanon. And uh, they're the going to enjoy so much. Yeah, we can't wait for him to be there. Yeah, so we want to celebrate our team on the ground. Yeah. You know, um, they're, uh, these team members have basically grown up with these kind of tensions all their lives. There's, you know, on every so often, there's tensions that rise up in this region. And this has just a, been a regular part of their life. And, um, you know, they, like, they just are like, you know they're what? So We're just continuing to do what we know to do. There's some of the, they, uh, our Lebanese team are just so full of joy. They just, you know, are, are walking in faith, in victory through this whole process and through this whole time. And I just want to celebrate them. They're working hard. They're getting things done. And uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I wish I could somehow I'm not put it into words the way I want to say it. But I'm just so thankful and so impressed and so blessed by the Lebanese team that God has brought together. In fact, this afternoon, um, USA time about... Uh, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Central time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. There'll be a corporate prayer time. And if you, you know, some people have asked what, one of the questions that comes up on a regular basis, how, how can, can we, we pray? pray for you? Yeah. yeah. So we're just speaking peace to the storm, just like Jesus and, and the disciples when they were in the boat. He, he's like, he, kind of like, why did you wake me up? He said, and then he spoke, peace, be still. And so we're speaking peace to the storm. Why? Because the gospel spreads when there's a, a time of peace. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter um, 2, verses 1 through 4, the Bible talks about, first of all, we should, in our times of prayer, we should pray and give thanks for those who are in authority, mm. uh, for kings and all those in authority. Why? That we might live a peaceful and a quiet and God, godly life so that the gospel will be able to spread to all those who don't have the knowledge of the truth. And that's what, you know, that's kind of the place from which we're praying and believing God during this time. So we just appreciate all um, you all do for us. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your um, your messages of concern and care for us. Um, just keep on uh, joining with us, like Matt said, at 2 p.m. today, uh, Oklahoma time. Um, there's going to be a prayer meeting. And just speak over this region. And, you know, no matter what happens, Peace we all still. know that God is... He surrounds us, he protects us, he takes care of us, and we're listening to his voice. And so it, it's, um, it's great to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> so um, another thing that a lot of people have asked us, and I thought this is another good question that's come up, and, it, and uh, we're about to finish. So if you have a question, make sure you drop it real quick. Um, but a lot of people have asked, is there any way that they can, you know, um, send any any money to aid organizations? And, um, you know, we know of a few organizations that are doing good works in some of the different areas. We are not personally involved with that directly. Um, and if you want to, you can send us uh, messages. But honestly, we are... Um, our aim is always about reaching the unreached in the area, and everything that we do is with that in with that in mind. 
And so there are, um, you know, you can support Club 1040 or you can, you can look at some of the projects on our website and you can see how you can be involved in, in the areas. And some things we just don't even publicize on mm -hmm. the website, but check out the website for more on that. Babe, the best way people can get, I even put this on one of my social posts. I'm like, the best way to become involved in this situation is to train up leaders. There are 90 students, well, I think 78 are enrolled, but we have a goal of 100. And there are students that are wanting to change the nations. Mm -hmm. And they are Arabic speaking. They are, you know, they, they know the culture. They know this environment. And they are wanting to be trained for the gospel. And so one of the best ways we can make a difference in the world is by supporting them. And yeah. so I, I'm personally saying, scholarship scholarship one of these precious students yeah. to change the nations yeah that's like you know a long-term solution there may be there's there's a lot of groups that will maybe help meet the the day-to-day immediate, -day need, immediate yeah. aid nate uh, but the long-term solution is a is the getting the gospel there trained church leaders and church planting movements so. and this is right in the region of this world i mean if you guys take time to go look at a map you know we are right near this situation and the people that are part of our student body are the ones that are going to go into this middle east uh, area and th they're incredible some of them minister in such a high level way and preach the gospel even better than you and i and all of our team mm -hmm. and it's just amazing so yeah we like to say that a lot of times what's happening when we go into an area you know it's like um I used to say this a lot. Yeah, I like <laughs> in Nigeria, this makes a lot of sense to Nigerians is, is that, you know, they have a dish called jollof rice and jollof rice has all kinds of ingredients. The main ingredients, of course, is rice. And then they also have, it has tomatoes, it has onions, it has garlic, it has different things. But there's one spice that it's like, if you don't have this spice, it's not jollof rice. And that is Pepe. Pepe. <laughs> <laughs> We're the Pepe. Yeah. Pepe that's so hot, it makes you sweat. And so, uh, um, and that's really, I used to say that, I'm like, you know, in Nigeria now, there's nearly 7,000 students, like we said. And so um, it, it's, it's making a huge impact on the nation, but the nation already has churches and ministries that has, you know, hundreds Amazing of thousands of people in them. And w I felt like we're just that spice. We're a potent, important spice, but it, um, without us, you can tell the difference. And it's the same here in Lebanon. The food is amazing in Lebanon. The churches are, you know, there's Christian yes. people that are so rich with the gospel. They've been standing against these challenges for centuries. Yeah. Yeah. When they talk to us, they're so grateful. They're like, thank you for coming and strengthening us, lifting up our arms, mm -hmm. giving us hope. Um, so it, it's neat to yeah. be, we have the privilege to be part of this region. And with your help, we have the privilege to be your, your representatives, exactly. your hands, your feet, your mm -hmm. voice. And then these students are going to be the next level that is going to be such a higher level. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for checking out what's happening this month. If you have any questions, you don't have to wait till next month. But on the first Wednesday of every month, we do this live Q&A. And it's your opportunity to hear what's happening, ask questions. And, uh, do you know, if you send us questions in advance, we do our best to answer them like we have just now. So God bless you. And thank you so much for your continued prayer and partnership as we look forward to reaching all 22 countries by the year 2030. God bless. Bless you guys.